Hi, this is Mark. In this video, we'll take a look at applying a shadow node. You can see that we have our character down in perspective on the ground. Instead of using the quad map original, I'll just use the pinned one so that I have these feet anchored properly. And what we want to do is just render this. So you can see that we have our character and we have our flattened character as well, but we don't actually have a shadow. We only have a representation of the character. So what we want to do is we want to make this change to a shadow. So let's use the shadow node, type in SHA and that'll bring up the shadow over here. And we're going to connect this underneath our character. So instantaneously you can see we have a shadow but something wrong is happening. And if you've paid attention in previous lessons, you know that you want to bitmap comp your character before filtering it through modules such as this. Otherwise you might get the treatment of a shadow to each individual piece inside the character. So what we're going to do is going to create a composite with Control H or Command H on a Mac. And we're going to plug our character down to the composite and that will plug into our peg transform. Now that it's been flattened and we render it, you'll notice that we have a single flat shadow cast from the character. So this method is really good. Uh, you can also change how blurry you want it to be. Uh, let's make this a 10. You could also change the color, the opacity of that shadow as well. Um, so suppose we look at our environment. This is predominantly green, so we might want to have maybe a tint, hint of this. So we'll use the eyedropper and we'll reduce the alpha a little bit here. And now we have similar shadows. Uh, maybe lower that saturation down a bit as well. So this is one way to do it. Another way would be to actually use a matte blur. So when you're exporting outside of the software, say you needed to bring this to another uh, software, you wouldn't get the shadow node rendering out properly because this is actually using a blend mode. And blend modes such as add, multiply, screen, etc. are not actually transferable outside of a software regardless of the software. You will basically export it as a normal mode and have to recreate the blend modes in the next software you bring it to. So if you were to need to export this or want to use a different method than the shadow node, you'll have to use this technique instead. So we're going to bring in a matte blur and we're going to connect this from the offset and we're going to give it a similar tint. So we could actually open up the shadow properties here and we could just eye drop what we've chosen. And let's see here at alpha 62. So let's make that alpha 62. So now these match. And let's blur that at 10 to match the shadow node. Now we'll plug this in. And to replace uh, a string, instead of placing a new one, you just hold on the Alt or Command on the Mac. And that will simply replace the strand. So now this doesn't exactly work. What we're actually missing is the blend mode. So as you know, in here, it's got a multiply automatically applied. We're going to need a blend mode. So we're going to go to the Combine module and go to Blending. Let's bring that over here and we're going to switch the Blend Mode from Normal to Multiply. And then we might want to boost back that Alpha to get it darker as it's a slightly different operation. So maybe let's go 130. So there you go. So when you're exporting uh, your information, what you would essentially do is you'd render out your character individually, your background individually, and you wouldn't export from the blend mode, you would export from the matte blur. Inside your next software, you would then add your multiply so that it would blend back and look natural like this. Another technique to shadows is if you have a puddle shadow that's a, a bitmap texture, how would you change the color? You could do it with a matte blur or you could also do it with a color scale here and physically change the red, green, and blue, and then add the blending mode of multiply. Uh, here you also have the option to change the alpha or darken your value as well. So the multiple options, whether you're using color scale or matte blur to use a multiply blend mode, or the actual shadow module if everything can be done within Harmony as well.